Boo! <laughs> Did I get you? Yeah, I know. It's been a month since I last posted. You're probably crying yourself to sleep every night wondering where I went, why all my videos are getting taken down, and why God has seemingly abandoned you. Well, don't worry, because I'm back and I'm gonna try to get back into it. It's always think black people what a fucking liar dude what a fucking weasley little liar dude <laughs> so here i am recycling an old halloween script i hope you enjoy it my mother nigga i'm escaping the hospital today nigga back the fuck up nigga back the fuck up sir just calm down fucking bitch i'm escaping i'm out of here i'm out of here nigga i'm out of here That's just the truth. That's the truth of the situation. Triple Beppo says. Fuck the ops, nigga. I'm four men. That nigga Dylan's mom dead. He dead as. Hey guys, Cracksmoker96 here, your favorite virtual idol. Now here's a question that you might not have a straight answer for. What really scares you? Is it clowns? Incels? Political polarization? Radical activists? Spiders? Big hairy balls? Well, let's be honest here. Literally none of those things really matter. I mean like, what really scares you? Is it watching your loved ones die before you can accomplish anything and make them proud? Is it dying alone with nobody to stand by your bedside? Is it leaving no legacy? See, I think the modern world requires modern fears, and while ghosts, goblins, and clowns might be spooky scary, I don't really think they're applicable to your life. I think true fear is one that is imminent, and one that poses a real threat to you. And I think the modern world is one whose fears are wrought from personal inaction, because there's nothing scarier than disappointing yourself. I think everyone has a preconceived notion about themselves that they will somehow fulfill what they consider to be their quote-unquote potential. And whether that's getting a six-figure salary or world domination, a level of effort is required on your part, of course. However, as the world continues to make stagnation more and more convenient for the average person, it seems that people's dreams have less and less of a chance to come to fruition, at least statistically. Because see, my friends, the world will not encourage you to achieve what you want, even if it says it will, even if the moral of every story says that the world would love you to accomplish your dreams, and that you should follow your heart. No. There is no one who will push you out of your chair, there is no boss who will promote you unprompted, and there is no magical fox girl who will clean up your house and encourage you to be happy at your wage slave office job. The fantasies of the modern world have shifted as well, and many popular genres like isekai in anime, magical realism in western television, and sigma male cinema are nothing more than the modern man's desperate wish for some esoteric force to get them off their ass so they can be more than the average Joe. But that's the thing. The average Joe is average because <laughs> the majority of the bell curve will fall upon his space. There are very few of us who can truly be considered special. The truth is, my beautiful, sweet, scrumptious baby cherub. If you're watching this video, you are most likely subscribed to this channel. You most likely enjoy the schizo rants, and that's why you clicked on this one, because it has a similar title to my other ones. And I am begging you, I am pleading with you, to do something. If you are not doing anything in life right now, if you are just sitting idly by and watching time pass by, you will never regret doing something. Anything. You will never regret doing what you actually want to do instead of being too afraid to take action. Video games, unless you're doing them at a professional level or unless, like, you know, you're a streamer or something, waste of time. And it's good to relax, it's good to ha have a little fun in your life. But what the fuck are you relaxing from if that's all you do? As someone who has 
literally a thousand hours in Fallout New Vegas, I'll tell you. It was only the first 200 hours that I actually enjoyed. It was only like... 21? Out of the 1,000 hours that I can actually remember with discernible clarity. And in the end, I could have been doing a lot more. There was a lot more I was interested in at the time. I just chose to waste my time because that was what gave me the biggest dopamine hit. Fallout New Vegas is still goaded, by the way. But I'm just saying, like... I don't know, I look back at my life, and I think about how much time I've wasted, and how much time I continue to waste. Because even if you acknowledge the fact that you are encouraged to waste time, you will still do it. Because you're biologically hardwired to want the quick dopamine hit. You want to scroll Instagram. You want to see the big booby babe on your Instagram feed. You want to see that guy's head explode. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no, man. In Call of Duty. <laughs> If there's one thing that you can glean from this video, let it be this. Will you feel comfortable dying in the same position you're at now? Will you be able to achieve those plans you think about in bed at night from your computer chair? Can you find happiness in a plain, ordinary life? Or will you be able to overcome your inhibitions and actually make something of yourself? See, the original script for this video ended with a dishearteningly abrupt stop. This video was designed to make you feel empty inside, make, <laughs> to make you question your decisions up to this point. And I felt like that was a little cruel. I felt that even for a Halloween video, that notion was a little bit too far. And that's why this video was never released. But upon further contemplation, I've realized that this script is eh, kind of worthwhile. And if that feeling is one that you, my dear viewer, feel echoing and reverberating in your heart, I urge you to channel this motivation into your vision of the future. I was once hopeless, just like you. I was once in a melancholic pit of despair that swallowed myself and my morals whole. I valued nothing more than cheap thrills and self-destruction. I was, admittedly, a true degenerate. Not an internet degenerate, not like one of you guys, like you weird fetishists or furries or anything. But I mean a real, steal your wallet and help you look for it kind of degenerate. I was a shell of my former self. I had tossed my ambitions to the wind and I had truly accepted that I would never achieve that which I had wanted. But I got out. Even if the pit seemed unending, even though the walls were sparse in opportunity, I clawed my way out tooth and nail by any means. And while my fingers lay bloodied and bruised, my nails torn from their cuticles, I emerged. I was reborn from the ashes unto a new sense, a renewed sense, of purpose. I regained my ambition, and the lessons I learned while in the pit, the friends I'd made, the friends I'd lost, became monuments to my story that will never leave me for as long as I draw breath. There was no solid turning point. There was no singular moment that showed a switch in my life. I have and do still struggle with many things in life. Stress, vices, sin, bitches. It's never been perfect, and it probably will not be perfect for a long time. No, actually, ever. But the realization of potential, the realization of my own internal view of myself, the realization of my vision is what brought me back to the surface. There was no one to tell me to do this, no one to instruct me on how to climb, no one to tell me that I was worthy of making it back. In fact, I didn't even believe it myself. But here I am, to be that person for you, and I want you to know that as my loyal worshipper, as my loyal cult member, you are not in that position. I'm here to tell you that you owe it to yourself to become the person that you want to be. And if yourself is not good enough, if you have low self-esteem, then do it for me. If you do better in life than you are right now, and if I influenced you in any way, please send pictures to me, please send a lengthy heartfelt note, and uh, I'll post it on Twitter and get 20 likes. <laughs> Whether you want to create art, music, or a whole new world, I believe that you deserve to at least try. The winding paths that your life may take are definitely erratic, 
they may seem uncontrollable at times. But with a combination of determination and resilience, I think that anyone, even the most inept of the IQ spectrum, can succeed in their goals and achieve self-actualization. And so as long as you're here, I will always be rooting for you. I, like you, am not a perfect person. I have not made perfect decisions, and I have not been the perfect Samaritan by any means. But that's okay, because in spite of all of this, you and I will succeed. We will achieve our goals by any means. And the sacrifices that we must make, our comfort, our stagnation, our current space that we occupy, these sacrifices will not only be justified, but will be vindicated. There is room in your life for faith, and I don't mean religious faith, I mean faith in yourself, faith that you can accomplish things. I feel like we live in a society today that encourages emotionality and therefore accepts weakness. I agree, you know, we should accept a level of emotionality. You know, you should be able to cry when, you know, someone dies. You should be able to, you know, go grrr, rah, <laughs> when you get angry. But I think that it also opens the floodgates to allowing people to be too scared of risk to take any action. I think that our modern culture will be helpful when you are in times of need and hurtful when you need encouragement. And I mean encouragement not in the, oh, you're, you're a good boy, you don't have to worry about changing, you don't have to worry about that. I mean encouragement in, it's going to be painful, but you're going to get through it, and there's a chance that your life will be better because of it, you know? So I guess the real question this video asks isn't really what scares you. But more so, why do you settle for a lifestyle that you know displeases you? And how many excuses can you shuffle through before you realize that the large majority of your problems are yours and yours alone, and that nobody can solve them except for yourself? And I understand that this entire video is just contrived, rambling nonsense, but... What I want to say is... I'm here for you. I'm watching over you, and I want you to know that you need to take steps to improve your life. And every step of the way, I want you to think back to me and think, you know what? Cracksmoker96 got my back. And that's it. I'm here for you because, if nobody else does, I care about you. And I love you. Subscribe to make me feel better about my regrets. But yeah, I don't know. This has been my epic unscripted schizo rant that was uh, adapted from a short one-page script that I wrote last year for a Halloween video. And it's also my big April comeback to YouTube. So thank you guys so much for watching. And if you like this video right now, I will give you a red pill. I will literally red pill you. The recording's nine minutes, but if I stop it here, the video will only be seven minutes, so I'm going to keep talking. Like, I was trying to learn something the other day. I was trying to learn a programming language, and I watched like a, a two-hour YouTube video, but my mind wasn't stimulated enough, so I booted up RuneScape. And you're thinking, oh, RuneScape, you just click a box like a thousand times. It's literally like not even, a, it's not even distracting, right? But I don't remember anything from that video, dude, physically pains me, because I want you to succeed. You are my beautiful, sweet goddess, hypothetically, metaphorically, and I want you to succeed. I want you to become the virtual idol that you've always wanted to be. What am I even talking about? As a, my great mentor and uh, basically my idol, Andrew Tate once said, Resist the slave mind. I am Morpheus, and I am here to give you the red pill. That's what he said. He exactly said that. Uh, if you can't find the clip, it's because he said it in a private call with me. Some of the richest and most successful people I've met 
can't do two plus two. They can't add four plus three. <laughs> Cut that part out. And so I turned off RuneScape and I'm like, all right, I'm going to watch another video. This one's one hour and uh, no more distractions. And I'm watching it. I'm like, all right, I'm going to take notes. I start taking notes. I get through the video. I have no idea what he said at all. That was literally nothing. You will open your eyes and you will be aware of how society is pushing you down. How, um, you say, oh man, ah, I don't know if I want to ask for that promotion, bro. I, I don't know if I, I'm scared of my boss. I've only been, I've only been working here 12 months. And maybe that's a, a bit of like a, a Ayn Rand objectivist view. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That's so gay. And I think the modern world is one whose fears are wrought from personal... I'm redoing the whole paragraph. Cut this out. Yeah, it's easy to shit on people from behind the comfortable visage of your computer screen. But at least those you shit on are doing something. Anything. That guy who's posting My Little Pony McDonald's videos? At least he's posting something. <laughs>